Hi, this is Mrs. Wiederholt, and welcome to my lesson video on domain and range notation. Now let's get started. First, let's define domain and range. A very basic definition of domain is that the domain is the set of all possible input values which produce a valid output. A basic definition of range is that the range is the set of all possible output values which result from using a particular input value. We use domain and range to identify the boundaries of any relation, whether it be a function or not. Because domain is the set of all x values, on a graph it follows the x-axis and it goes from the left to the right. Whereas the range, being the set of all possible y values, starts at the bottom of the y-axis and moves upwards. So if we want to look at the domain of this circle right here, we see that the x value, the domain, starts over here where the x value would be a negative 2. And it continues towards the right until this point right here where the x value is positive 2. So we would say that the x is greater than or equal to negative 2, but less than or equal to positive 2. Now if we want to describe the range of this circle, the range starts along the y-axis right here where y equals 1 and as it moves upward it stops right here where y equals 5. So we could say that the range or y is going to be greater than or equal to 1 but less than or equal to 5. Now basically what we've just done is we've identified the boundaries of the circle. Our domain of the circle goes from negative 2 to positive 2. See? From negative 2 to positive 2. And the range goes from positive 1 to positive 5. Positive 1 to positive 5. Now let's move on and see the different ways we can express or write domain and range. We will learn three different notations or ways to write domain and range. The three notations are inequality notation, interval notation, and set notation. Inequality notation is probably the notation you are most familiar with. In the previous example, I used inequality notation to write the domain and range of that circle graph. An example of inequality notation would be x is greater than or equal to 5. And you would pronounce it as x is greater than or equal to 5. The format using interval notation would be just a little different. It would look like this. And it would be pronounced like this. The interval from 5 to infinity inclusive of 5. Interval notation can be easier to write, but sometimes more lengthy to say. Now let me give you a little more detail on interval notation. You use a bracket to denote or equal to. So if this had just been x is greater than 5, we would have put a parenthesis in front of 5. But since x is greater than or equal to 5, the bracket tells us that the value of x not only is greater than 5, but it could equal 5. Now this symbol right here is called the infinity symbol. And yes, it's really just an 8 lying on its side, but it represents infinity. It represents infinitely going in a certain direction with no ending. Now, because you can never reach the end of infinity, you will always use a parenthesis after infinity, or if your interval is starting out with negative infinity, you would put a parenthesis in front of it. Now let's look at set notation. Set notation is written like this, and it is pronounced the set of all x such that x is greater than or equal to 5. Now if you are one of my students, set notation is the one we will use the least 
but you are still required to at least be able to recognize this format and recognize what it stands for and what type of notation it is. Now let's do some examples. Now we have three examples in which we are going to identify the domain and range using interval notation and inequality notation. Now in the first graph, I want us to study the domain first. Now looking at this graph, yes, it's going in a downward direction, but it's also going leftward. It is not a vertical line, so it is going leftward, which means it's going towards negative infinity. Remember, we're talking about the domain. It's heading leftward, so that's heading towards negative infinity. As we go along the curve this way, yes, it's going upward, but because it's at an angle, it's also going rightward. And due to the arrow, that means it's going infinitely in a rightward direction. So we would write the domain using interval notation like this. We would say from negative infinity to positive infinity. Now if we want to express this in inequality notation, it would look something like this. X is greater than negative infinity, but less than positive infinity. Now what this means is this means our domain contains all real numbers, and this is a symbol for all real numbers. It's kind of like an R, but instead of one vertical line, you put two vertical lines. So all three of these are ways you would need to recognize domain of all real numbers. Now let's look at the range of this graph. As I stated before, this curve is heading infinitely in a downward direction. It is also headed infinitely in an upward direction. So for interval notation, it would look exactly like our domain's interval notation. It goes from negative infinity to positive infinity. And if we want to exp express the range in inequality notation, instead of using an X, we use a Y because we're talking about the range. So Y is greater than negative infinity, but less than positive infinity. And because it contains, this range contains all real numbers, we could use the symbol to represent all real numbers. Now let's look at the second graph. In this graph, what do you notice that's different? We have endpoints. So this graph is not going to go on infinitely in any direction. The endpoint means it stops at a certain point. Now the other thing I need you to recognize is that these endpoints are hollow, meaning the domain only goes to that point, but it doesn't equal that point. So in trying to identify the domain of this graph, I need to find the x value that is furthest to the left which would be this one. Now the reason is, remember, when you are reading your domain, you read it like a book, from the left to the right, okay? So I find this point right here. It's further left than this one. Well, what is the value of this point or the x value of this point? It's negative 4. So in interval notation, that means my domain is going to start at negative 4. Now, I put a bracket there because even though you don't see a filled in point right here, anytime you have a sharp corner like that, it is telling you that yes, that point is included. Only a hollow point means that that value is not included, okay? So we are starting at negative four and we are gonna go all the way this one ends where x is 2, this one ends up to where x would be 3, so this is the point we go with. So that means it goes all the way up to where x is 3, but it doesn't include 3 because of that hollow point, so I put a parenthesis after it. You would pronounce this as the interval from negative 4 to positive 3 inclusive of negative 4. Now, in inequality notation, you would write, write it like this. X is greater than or equal to negative 4, but less than 3. Now, let's look at the range. 
Now for the range, remember we start at the bottom and work our way up. So if I start at the bottom of this graph, this is the lowest point where this graph reaches. And it is where y would equal negative 5. Now because of that hollow point, remember y cannot actually equal negative 5. It just goes down to negative 5. And how high does it go up to? Well, it works its way all the way up to where y would equal positive 5. So this is how you would write it in interval notation. I would open with a parenthesis and put negative 5 to positive 5, close parentheses. And I would read this, read it like this. The interval from negative 5 to positive 5. Now remember, I use parentheses to show that y cannot actually equal negative 5. It goes down to negative 5, but it doesn't also equal negative 5. Same is true for going upward. It goes, the y values can go up to neg, excuse me, they can go up to positive 5, but they cannot actually equal positive 5. Now, to write your range in inequality notation, you would write it and pronounce it like this. y is greater than negative 5, but less than positive 5. Now let's look at the third graph. In this graph we see the curve starting at a specific point and going upward and leftward infinitely. So the domain for this one we would start out at negative infinity. Remember we're going from left to right. So we would start at negative infinity. And how far to the right does it go? It goes to where x equals 4. Because it's a filled in dot, that means x not only goes up to 4, but it also equals 4. So we end it with a bracket. We would pronounce this by saying that this is the interval from negative infinity through positive 4. Using the word through means that it does include the, point, the actual point of 4. Now in inequality notation, we would write and pronounce this as x is greater than negative infinity, but less than or equal to 4. Now let's identify the range. Now on this one, our range begins with a y value of 0, and it goes upward towards infinity. So in interval notation, we would write this as from 0 to positive infinity, inclusive of 0. And in inequality notation, we would write this as y is greater than or equal to 0, but less than positive infinity. Now I hope this video has helped you to understand a little bit more about domain and range notations, and I look forward to working with you again. Bye-bye.